What's up, everyone? Today I will use this question about driverless cars in Cambridge LC16 to show you how to answer the question. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? First of all, very important, you need to understand what outweigh means. The use of outweigh means they are asking if the sum of the advantages carries a greater weight or greater importance or greater significance than the sum of the disadvantages. In other words, they are not asking you to count how many advantages and disadvantages there are and decide if the advantages outnumber the disadvantages. That is not what they are asking. They are asking which side is more significant. Let's take, for example, the ELTS exam. There are probably a lot of disadvantages of taking the exam. It costs you a lot of money. Preparing for the exam takes up a lot of your free time, and it makes you doubt yourself when you fail to get the score you need. However, once you get the score you need, you will be able to move to a new country to do your dream job or live your dream life. So it's worth the money and the hard work. This advantage is so important, it carries a greater weight than all three disadvantages put together. Therefore, the advantages of taking the exam outweigh the disadvantages. That is what outweigh means. If they wanted to ask if there were a greater number regardless of importance, they would have used the word outnumber. They would have asked, do the advantages outnumber the disadvantages? So please keep in mind that this type of question is asking you which side is more significant, not which side has a greater number. There is another type of question that asks what are the advantages and disadvantages? For this type of question, you definitely need to write more than one advantage and more than one disadvantage. Since the question uses the plural, advantages and disadvantages, they are asking what are the advantages and disadvantages. But for the outweigh type, I promise you, it's 100% correct to give only one advantage and only one disadvantage. Because again, they are not asking you to count the advantages and the disadvantages. They are asking which side is more significant. Of course, you can write more than one advantage and the disadvantage. But I highly recommend that you write only one. Because in this way, each body paragraph will have only one main idea. And you can fully develop your ideas. And meanwhile, don't write too many words. Having only one main idea in every paragraph is very very, very important. As you can see in my score explainer, one of the reasons why I got a 7 in the writing test is that in test 2, every paragraph has one main topic. Now let's go back to this question. I will show you how I would structure my essay. In the future, all cars, buses, and trucks will be driverless. The only people traveling inside these vehicles will be passengers. Do you think the advantages of driverless vehicles outweigh the disadvantages? So my opinion is that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. In body paragraph 1, I will talk about the side that I disagree with, which is the disadvantages. Of course, there are many disadvantages of using driverless cars, but as I already explained, it's better to pick only one disadvantage to discuss. So we first discuss the disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? And then we will explain why this disadvantage is not important. So I think one of the disadvantages of these cars is that they can lead to large employment losses. One downside of self-driving cars might be that they could lead to large employment losses. And then I will explain how these cars could lead to employment losses. Nowadays, in many countries, a great number of people are making a living by driving, be they truckers, bus drivers, or delivery couriers. A delivery courier is someone who delivers, for example, your Amazon packages to your doorstep. Imagine all these people are made redundant by autonomous cars. That would raise the unemployment rates in these countries significantly. 
Normally, when you develop your topic sentence, you would give explanations and examples. But not every example needs to start with words like "for example" and "for instance." These are the examples I gave. Truckers, bus drivers, and delivery couriers are examples of people who make a living by driving. This paragraph is not done yet because my opinion is that the disadvantages are less important than the advantages. Here, I need to explain why this disadvantage of employment losses isn't very significant. Why isn't it a big deal? One way you can write this part is to offer a solution. If you can overcome this disadvantage, then it wouldn't be a big deal, would it? So, how can we solve the job losses caused by driverless cars? I think if drivers reskill themselves, they will probably be able to get a job in another industry. However, I think this can be avoided if drivers reskill to get themselves a job in a new sector. So from here to here, I'm discussing the disadvantage. I'm discussing what the disadvantage is. And from here to here, I'm explaining why this disadvantage is not important. Does this make sense? Now let's move on to body paragraph two. It's the same here. We first need to discuss the advantage and then say why we think this is a great advantage. Why does this advantage carry so much weight? I think one of the advantages is that those cars can help businesses cut costs. On the positive side, driverless cars can help businesses reduce operating expenses, and then I will explain how these cars can help businesses reduce operating expenses. This is because with these cars, they would not need to hire drivers to deliver their products or services to their customers. But an example. For instance, the American logistics company UPS currently has hundreds of thousands of truck drivers and pays them an average of sixty thousand dollars per year, which adds up to tens of billions of dollars annually. Replacing these drivers with autonomous cars would mean that these huge salary payments could be eliminated. Does this example do a good job supporting the main idea of reducing operating expenses? Yes, I think it does. Next, we need to explain why this advantage is so important. Why does it carry so much weight? This part is hard. Try to find the bigger picture. When talking about the bigger picture, it almost always has something to do with the whole society, the whole country, or the whole world. Ask yourself this question. What benefits can a reduced operating expense bring to society? Well, it can bring society cheaper and better goods because businesses can invest the money they save by using driverless cars in improving their products. I think this could create a great advantage for society as a whole because companies could devote the money they save on labor to other aspects of their business. Which could mean cheaper, better goods for consumers. So at the end of body paragraph one, I offer a solution. Even though driverless cars could lead to employment losses, this advantage is not significant because it could be overcome. And here at the end of body paragraph two, I explain why the advantage of helping businesses cut costs is so important. It's so important because it can benefit the whole society. That's why this advantage outweighs this disadvantage. I'm not saying this method of offering a solution and talking about the bigger picture works every time, but it does work a lot of times. On my blog, I have another essay that I used the exact same strategy to write. Let's quickly go through it. At the present time, the population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? In body paragraph one, I talk about one of the disadvantages of having a large number of young people, which is that、uh, many of them may be unable to get a job. And then I go on to develop this disadvantage. And then here is me explaining how this disadvantage is insignificant. It's insignificant because it can be overcome. However, I do not think this is a major disadvantage for young people as long as they make the leap to self-employment. 
Did you see how I make the disadvantage insignificant by offering a solution? And then in body paragraph two, I first talk about one of the advantages. An advantage of having a large number of young people is that it's good for the economy. And then I develop this idea. And then at the end of this paragraph, I explain why this advantage is so important. Again, I asked myself these questions: What's the big picture? What benefits can a strong economy bring to the whole society or the whole country? I think this is a great advantage for a country because a strong economy offers people a high standard of living. Did you see how I explain why the advantage is significant and the disadvantage is insignificant, and therefore the advantage outweighs the disadvantage? Now let's go back to driverless cars. So far, we've finished the two body paragraphs. Now let's move on to the introductory paragraph. As you probably know, in this paragraph, we can first paraphrase the question statement. So I will change cars, buses, and trucks to vehicles, and change drivers to autonomous. Self-driving cars are also called autonomous cars. So here we can use autonomous. In the future, all vehicles will be autonomous. For the second sentence, the only people traveling inside these vehicles will be passengers. I don't think it's even possible to change the individual words, so I will rearrange the sentence elements. I will move passengers to the beginning of the sentence. Passengers will be the only people inside these vehicles. Here we don't need to repeat vehicles. We can use them to refer to the vehicles mentioned in the previous sentence. So almost the same vocabulary, but different grammar. Next, I will give my opinion. You can include the two main ideas in your opinion sentence, or you can include only the main idea of the side that you agree with. I believe businesses can cut costs by using driverless cars, and this advantage far outweighs any potential disadvantages. This is my opinion, and this is the main idea of the side that I agree with. But in the conclusion paragraph, I will state the main ideas of both sides because I think this will be a better summary of my essay. In conclusion, although self-driving vehicles could result in many job losses, I believe this downside is greatly outweighed by the upside that these vehicles could help businesses save operating costs. This is my opinion, and these are the two main ideas. This is the entire essay. I think the hardest part of this type of essay is to explain why the side that you agree with is important and the side that you disagree with is unimportant. In this video, I shared with you guys one method, which is to offer a solution and find the bigger picture. But you shouldn't expect to learn only one method and hope you can use it to answer all advantages outweigh disadvantages questions. I've published five essays of this type on my blog. The link is in the description. Definitely go to check them out so that you can have more flexibility when answering this type of question. That's all for this video. Here's another video in which I talk about how to answer causes and solutions questions. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.